Hey, what's up, Science Warriors? Guys, welcome back for another flip video here in the 6th grade Atlas Science class with Coach Jones. Guys, today we're going to be talking about elements. And our essential question is a little long, but we're going to figure out what are elements, how are they represented, and what elements make up the spheres of our planet Earth. So please write your EQ at the top of your notes page in your journal. By the way, your notes should be behind your unit page. Okay, the one that we decorated and we set up, it's kind of our title page for the unit. You're gonna need to set up Cornell style notes. Okay, to do that, you need to include an EQ section. That should be the top line of your paper. You need a question section, which is only about two to three fingers wide from the spine of your notebook. Make sure that your notes is your largest, biggest section. And then down below about a couple of lines should be your summary. Okay, so a little something to remember Okay, if you run out of room on this page, I am allowing you to go onto the next page as long as you set up that Cornell note pattern on the second page as well. So you can do that for as many pages as you need to complete your notes. So let's dive into it, everybody. First off, we need to talk about what is matter. Okay, matter is super important because it is everything. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. For something to take up space, that means that it has volume. Okay, so matter has mass and volume. So if you look here, we have a couple of different equations for volume, all right? And we put them all together and we can see that the volumes of each of these items, if we put them all together, if they were to be in the same place at the same time, which is impossible, you would see that they take up different amounts of space. Okay, so there's some basics for us. So let's talk a little bit more about mass. Mass can be measured with a digital scale or triple beam balance. It is measured in milligrams, grams, and kilograms. But really what is mass? Mass is how much stuff, how much matter is inside of something, whether it be your uh, pen, it could be a paintbrush, it could be a squeezy ball. Okay, size does not determine mass necessarily. Okay, some things can be small and contain a lot of mass. Now weight, on the other hand, is a totally different measurement. Weight is the measurement of ounces and pounds that the force of gravity of Earth has is pulling something down. Okay, so this is why things weigh more at the surface of the Earth than they do when they are high up in the atmosphere. Okay, the weights are actually different because they are further away from the center of gravity of Earth. So therefore, the force pulling down on them is weaker the higher you are. Now, in that case, if I have an airplane on the ground, okay, its mass, okay, let's say it's 20,000 kilograms, okay, its weight is 20 tons. It flies up to about I don't know, 15 miles into the air, its mass is still gonna be the same as it was on the ground. However, its weight is gonna actually decrease a little bit, okay? Probably not enough for us to really notice right away, especially if you're the pilot, but enough that if you were to measure it, you would see a significant enough difference. Okay, so with all of that, let's now begin talking about what are elements. Okay, an element, must be, an element must be made of matter, it also must be a pure substance, and it cannot be broken down into any smaller like divisions. So if I cut it and keep making it into smaller pieces, what is the smallest thing something can be? Is an element. Now that smallest form of an element is depicted in the picture right here. This is what an atom looks like. Everything that you experience, whether it be air, water, yourself, a desk, anything, is made up of atoms. The only place that we do not find atoms is in outer space, where there is nothing in between planets and stars. Okay, now, these atoms are super tiny. We don't have any instruments that can actually see an atom, but trillions of these make up exactly who you are. Okay, so these atoms, these elements, okay, we represent them on what is called the periodic table of elements. Okay, scientists have arranged the elements on this table in a very specific way. Like there's a reason why hydrogen 
Gay has the number one, and it is in this location on the table. There are many things. So when we represent elements on the table, we're gonna use what's called a chemical symbol to represent them. So hydrogen right here, okay, that's its name. It's represented with the symbol of H, okay? H is how we shorten the name for hydrogen. Now, there are other things that have H's in them, like helium, okay? But you notice they are not the exact same. You will also notice that there are some elements that only have one letter, some elements that have two letters, okay? There are rules with this. The first is that if it has one letter, that letter is going to be capitalized, always. If an element is represented by two letters, the first letter of that chemical symbol will be capitalized. The second will be lowercase every single time. Okay, so that's how you can kind of tell what is on here without having to actually read the names by learning the symbols. Now, the periodic table has groups which are vertical groupings up and down, but then we also have what's called periods where they are arranged in rows. Okay, even these up here, this is a this is a period. Okay, period one has hydrogen come all the way across helium, and so on and so forth. Then row two, which is period number two. Okay, each one of those periods and groups, okay, has something to say about the elements that appear in those rows or columns. All right. So we mentioned before that elements are a pure substance. So what does that actually mean and what does that look like in this case when we speak about elements and therefore also atoms? Okay, a pure substance is made up of only one kind of atom or molecule. Okay, molecules are just a couple of different atoms put together. But in this case, molecule is not two different atoms. It's when two of the same atom have attached themselves together, okay? So if it's not pure, we ha can have a mixture. So it could be made up of different kinds of atoms or even have multiple molecules combined physically together. But here's the thing, they're not chemically combined. Okay, if something is chemically combined, they cannot be separated. Okay, so if we have a mixture of atoms and molecules, those things can be separated apart, okay? So some examples here, nitrogen, is a gas in its normal state. But how is how does it actually exist? Well, it's represented chemically by the letter N, but nitrogen doesn't just exist as a single atom. It likes to have a buddy, a second nitrogen atom attached to it. So we have N2, okay? Meaning there are two nitrogen atoms in this element because it's pure. There's nothing else in there except for nitrogen. Even though there's two, it's still pure. Okay, oxygen, the oxygen we breathe, exists as O2. You may have heard of it re represented as that way, especially if you do any snorkeling or um, deep sea water diving with the scuba tanks. O2 means that we have one atom of oxygen, another atom of oxygen, and they are actually combined. They are joined together, but they are still pure because guess what? We have oxygen on one side and the same thing on the other. So there's nothing else other than that in there. Argon is another gas. Argon is very unique in that it can exist as a single atom in nature. So argon has a chemical symbol of A, lowercase r, so capital A, lowercase r. All right, and there is not uh, more than any, than just the one, okay? So therefore it is definitely pure because there's only one atom in this situation absolutely pure the next one is carbon dioxide this is what we breathe out and if you look we will notice that the chemical notation is a capital c capital o and then a two meaning that we have two oxygen atoms and because there's not a number right here this means we have one so we have one carbon atom two oxygen atoms so how many atoms do we have in total if we add those up we have three that make up this molecule However, how many different elements are there here, okay? Atoms can, the number of atoms is different than the number of elements, okay, in certain cases, like this one. So we have a capital C, and we have a capital O. Anytime we see capitals, we know that those are different elements on the periodic table. So therefore, we have one element and then two elements. 
but to make this whole molecule, we need one of the carbon, two atoms of the oxygen, making for a total number of atoms, three. Okay, so let's talk real quick about the different spheres of the Earth and what kind of atoms we find there because there's a pattern in it. Okay, a lot of things in nature have patterns. The first is that we have the lithosphere. The lithosphere is all of the solid rock that makes up our planet, okay? Think of everything below your feet, okay? It's the solid part of Earth. It's where our rocks and minerals are. They're made up mostly of oxygen and an element called silicon. These are the most abundant, or means we find them, we find those two elements the most, all right? There are also small amounts of metals, so like aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, those things we can find in side of the lithosphere so like the ground and the rocks and everything that's uh, that's making up the solid portion of that thing. okay so that's the lithosphere the biosphere is our second sphere of the earth there are four total the biosphere contains all the living things of earth the grass the trees the birds us dogs cats everything that's considered alive bacteria as well okay most of the things that make these up Okay, element-wise are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, and that's six. Those six are the most abundant elements that we find in living things. We can find a lot more, but these are the ones we find the most. Okay? Now, the hydrosphere. Hydro meaning water, sphere meaning circle. So this is the water circle of life, or sorry, of Earth. Okay, so it's all of the water that exists on our planet, okay? The main components here are really easy to remember because it's the oceans and lakes and rivers. So what makes up water? H2O. Oxygen is the O, H is the hydrogen. So these two atoms are the most common things found in the hydrosphere. Remember, fish don't count as the hydrosphere, they count as the biosphere. So you can't count those kind of things in the hydrosphere. All right, and then the last one right here, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is pretty easy. You need it to breathe. Okay, it's all of the air that surrounds the Earth. Okay, I need you to remember though that the air is actually a mixture of gases. It's not just oxygen. There's actually a lot more than that. So our most abundant, we have three. We have nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen makes up about 70 to 75% of the air we breathe. Okay, we don't even need nitrogen to breathe. It's not something we use, but it makes up 70 to 75%. Oxygen only makes up about 20% of the air we breathe, but that's enough to allow us to stay alive and not suffocate. The last one that we can find the most of is argon. Argon is that one from the example before. It's a very special gas, and it is found in our atmosphere as well. It helps protect us from some of the things that are out in space. Okay, so those three are the most abundant or the most common elements in the atmosphere, okay? So not too bad. Not, and we can see here that there's not very many different elements on uh, that make up the Earth compared to what all we found on the periodic table. If you really pay attention, you will see that oxygen was found in the lithosphere, oxygen was found in the biosphere, Oxygen was found in the hydrosphere, and look, oxygen was found in the atmosphere. So what can you say about that? What conclusion can you make? Okay, give you a second to think about it. I've got something. How about this? Maybe oxygen is the most abundant element found on Earth. Okay, if it's found in all four spheres and it's the most one of the most abundant in each, maybe it's the one that we can find the most of. Okay, very cool. All right, so now that we have completed the video, here's what I need you to do. Okay, I need you to make sure that your notes are completed. Make sure you pause, rewind, anything that you need to do to fill in everything that you feel is important. Okay, about make sure that you're looking at your EQ to guide you. Make sure you have information about each of the three things that are in our EQ. Now, in order to actually complete the rest of today's assignment, I need you to go back to Google Classroom to complete 
um, everything else that is posted there. Make sure to read instructions. If you don't read the instructions, it will not be counted as complete. All right, Science Warriors. Guys, thank you so much for doing this. I will see you guys in class. Enjoy yourselves. Hopefully you learned something about elements today. And I will see you next time. All right, y'all. Peace.